Good morning, everyone. The next type of transformation that we are going to talk about is a reflection. Today, specifically, we're going to talk about reflections over the X or Y axis. So first, let's start with a definition. A reflection is a transformation in which a figure is flipped over a line of symmetry. So if you look at that image to the left, you can if you start with the blue and you go over to the green one, you can tell that it is flipped. And the line that it flipped over is the y-axis. So that yellow would be the line of symmetry. The next part says, each point and its image are the same distance from the line of reflection. So looking at that image, I'm gonna zoom in. Let's start, let's say right here, this was A, which means that up here would be A prime. So if I count to the yellow line, this goes one, two, three units. So on the other side, A prime, one, two, three, is also three units. And it should do that with every point. So say this one was B, it's only one away. Over here, B prime, also only one away. This is C, makes this C prime. One, two, three, four. So on this side, it should also be one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So let's start with, what if I wanted to reflect over the x-axis? So let's start by filling in this table with the pre-image. Our pre-image is there in blue, x, y, z. X is at the point negative 3, positive 1. Y is at the point 1, 4. And Z is at the point 3, 2. Okay, so up there in the title, it says reflect over the x-axis. So my x-axis, you see how they're labeled? X is the one that goes side to side. So I want to flip this blue figure across that yellow line. So if we follow the rule that it was before, we know that every single point in the image is the same distance as it was in the pre-image. Okay, so let's do it like this. Let's start with X. So point X was only one away from the line. So I need to do that same thing here. Let me do it this way. Only one square away from the line. So now I need to do that, but on the other side, one square away. So X prime should go right there. That's X prime. Now I'm going to go ahead and write it in. That's the point negative 3, negative 1. Then for Y prime, we're going to do the same thing. So looking at the point Y, it's 1, 2, 3, 4 squares away from the yellow line. So I need to do 4 squares the other direction. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is where Y prime should land. And then same thing with Z. Z is one, two squares away. So we're gonna do the same thing. One, two squares away. Z prime should be right there. So 
So let me connect these points. And that would be my triangle reflected over the x-axis. Now let me finish writing in the points for the image. So y prime is at positive 1, negative 4. And z prime is at positive 3, negative 2. So that's one way that you can do reflections, by actually counting the squares on the graph. But with every transformation that we have, we're going to have a coordinate rule that we can follow. So I want to know if you can figure out what the rule should be here. So let's take a look at what it says on our table. If you notice, on our pre-image, x was at negative 3, positive 1. But on the image, the point is at negative 3, negative 1. So if you look at those numbers, the only thing that really changed is that the 1 is negative now. Okay, then on the y, it was 1, 4, but then it changed to 1, negative 4. So same thing. The y value turned negative. And for z, 3, 2 turned into 3, negative 2. So again, it's only the y value that changed. And the only thing that changed is that now it's negative. So that is actually the rule that you have to follow when you're doing reflections over the x-axis. The x will stay the same, nothing happened with it. But with the y value, it turns negative, so negative y. Let's do another example like this. Okay, so let's reflect over the x-axis. And as you can see, I went ahead and I wrote down what the rule is, that way we wouldn't forget. And I already went through and wrote down all the coordinates for each of these points, D, E, and F. So instead of counting squares, what I wanna do is use this rule. So for point D, negative three, negative three, if I were to follow this rule, the only thing that's gonna change is that the Y value has a negative sign, but it's already negative here. So I'm gonna write a side note. What happens when you have a double negative? Let, let me just write it over here. So if it was negative three, but then I'm making it negative again, hopefully we remember the rule that when there's two negatives, it basically is just positive 3. Okay, so let me go back to our slide. Our x value is going to stay the same. But our y value, since it's double negative, is going to become positive. So D prime should be at negative three, positive three, which is up here. Then for E prime, the same thing. The X value is going to stay the same, but the Y value, we're gonna change the sign. So since it was negative two, we're gonna change that to a positive two. So three comma two, that's our E prime. And then lastly, our F. The x value stays the same, 2, but we changed the sign of the y value. But notice on this one, our y value is 0. f is on the x-axis. So there is no such thing as positive 0 or negative 0. 0 just always stays the same. So 0 stays the same. So that point, f prime, actually lands right on top of regular f. So let's draw this triangle and see how you can tell that it's reflecting over the x-axis. So that's two different ways of doing it. Either you can count from the graph or you could use the rule. Honestly, it's probably going to be easiest to just use the rule. When you're reflecting over the x-axis, you just got to make the y value negative. 
Okay, so let's try reflecting over the other axis, reflecting the y-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the points for P, Q, and R. P is at negative 4, negative 3. Q is at negative 3, positive 3. And R is at negative 1, positive 2. So let's write those in. Okay, so remember that this time, I want to reflect over the y-axis. So our y-axis is the one that goes up and down. So we're going to count from that axis. For P, it's 1, 2, 3, 4 squares away. So we need to do that same amount on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4. That is where P prime should be. For Q, it's one, two, three away. So again, three away, one, two, three. That is where Q prime should be. And then last R is only one square away from the yellow line. So we're going to go one square the other direction. That's where R prime should be. Okay, now let's draw our triangle. And that's how it would look reflected over the y-axis. Let's write the coordinates for each of those points. So P prime is at positive 4, negative 3. Q prime is at positive 3, positive 3. And R prime is at positive 1, positive 2. So can we figure out what the rule should be when we're reflecting over the y-axis? Well, it's actually pretty simple. So again, just take a look at the coordinates here. Negative 4, negative 3, change to positive 4, negative 3. Negative 3, positive 3, change to positive 3, positive 3. So the numbers are the same. The only thing that changed is look at those first numbers. Negative 4 changed to positive. Negative 3 changed to positive. Negative 1 changed to positive. So in this case, it's the x value that changes. So we're going to put that as negative x. But the y value stays exactly the same. OK, so let's use this rule to do the last example. There's my image, LMN, or I'm sorry, the pre-image. I already wrote the coordinates and I wrote down our rules so that we wouldn't forget. But now let's write where our image should be. So if I'm following this rule, Y is going to stay exactly the same, but X is going to change signs. So on point L, this negative 2 is going to change to a positive, but this 4 is going to stay the same. Okay, with the next point, positive 2 is going to change to negative, but the y value stays the same. And the last point, that negative 4 is going to change to positive 4, but the y value stays the same. So let's go and graph those points so we can see what our image looks like. 2, 4, that's L prime negative 2, positive 1, that's m prime, and 4, negative 3 is n prime. So these triangles overlap a little bit, but that's fine because you can still clearly see that it's reflecting over the y-axis like we need it to.